Well, welcome once again to this edition of The Golden Rule. It's good to have you back. And as a reminder, this is a continuation of last week's program. So uh, it's building on what I said last week, and I'm not sure that I can go back over what I said, which is foundational to what I'm going to say now. So it'd be very beneficial for you. If you find this topic of any interest at all, to go back, you can go to uh, Lakes TV 3, and all the programs are archived there. Go down to current shows, go down to the Golden Rule, and you can watch all of these programs, even from a year or two ago. So anyway, we're talking about the subject, and I started out by saying the, the program was gonna be a little bit um, uh, interactive, and I'll, I'll start it out that way again by asking you to fill in the missing word when I start to say something, which is right now. For God so loved the world that he, I heard you say gave, which is right. For those of you who know the Bible, it's John 3, 16. And everybody that has any exposure to Christianity at all has heard that verse in one context or another. Basically, it says that God is a giving God. He gives lavishly. He gives bountifully. He gives generously. That's his heart. And we benefit from his giving nature by receiving from his gifts. But it also, if you are a born again believer, you have his spirit on the inside of you, which makes you a giving person by nature, not by compulsion, not, yeah, I'm gonna get ahead of myself here. I don't wanna get ahead of myself, but I'm just saying, it's God's nature to give. And, uh, which is opposite to ours. So I read last week, Luke 6, 38, which says, Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. But then he goes on to say, For with the same measure you use to give to others, it shall be measured to you again. And repeat that. The measure that you use is the same measure that God will use to give back to you. God's always going to give back one way or another when we give. But he also sees what's in our heart when we give. And if, uh, oh, let's just say they're, they're taking an offering for something or other and, and they're asking people to give $100 and you say, no, I don't want to give $100. i will give 10 and God says, okay, that's nice. And uh, it's, it's kind of like if you use a teaspoon to measure out how much you're going to give, God will use a teaspoon to measure it back to you. If you use a tablespoon, he'll use a tablespoon. If you use a cup, he'll use a cup. If you use a dump truck, he'll use a dump truck. Because he says the measure that you use to give. In other words, if your heart is really moved so that you give generously, lavishly, without even giving it a second thought, he says, I'm going to bless you back. And that, by the way, is how many Christians become financially successful. People don't, yeah, well, look at that guy, all the money he's got. You know where he got it? By giving dump truck loads away. That may not make sense to you, but I'm telling you, that's the way it works. I want you to look with me at Matthew 26, verses 6 through 13. It talks about a woman. And uh, it says that when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment or very expensive ointment. And she poured it on his head as he sat eating. When his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, for what purpose is this waste? They considered it a waste. She poured expensive ointment on Jesus. And so what's she wasting all that ointment for? 
it might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Oh, doesn't that sound generous? You know who the disciple was that was saying that? His name was Judas Iscariot. And you know why he was saying that? Because he was the treasurer, number one. He was Jesus' treasurer. He carried the, the money bag. And he was also a thief. And he could have cared less about the poor. Him thinking, you know, we could have sold that and stuck it in the treasury and I could have handled some of that myself. So, it wasn't because he was being concerned about the poor. This ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. And when Jesus understood it, he said, Why do you trouble the woman? She has done a good work on me. You have the poor with you always. You're concerned about the poor? You'll have plenty of poor people around all the time. You want to take care of the poor, if that's really what your heart is, is concerned about. But he says, me, you won't have always. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. She didn't know that. They didn't know that. But he knew it. He knew he was going to be dying shortly. And so he received this gift from her as a very generous act on her part. And then Jesus said this, Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman has done be told for memorial of her. This was done 2,000 years ago by a woman in Israel. And here we are in 2024 in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, still talking about her. She made her mark by her generous act. She wasn't looking to become notorious historically. She was just loving Jesus. You know, I had a dream one time. I don't have lots of dreams or visions or stuff like that. But when you have one from God, you never forget it. And I remember this dream. It was so vivid. In the dream, there was a guy who wanted to date the most popular girl in the class. But the trouble was she had a waiting list about three months long because everybody wanted to date her. But he did manage to get logged into her appointment schedule three months out. And so he's spending the next three months anticipating this wonderful opportunity to date this girl. And he's setting his pennies aside and setting money aside because he wants to make a good impression on her. So finally the day comes, he picks her up, he's rented a limo, he's got a tuxedo on or whatever. He takes her to the finest restaurant in town, buys her a big bouquet of flowers. And, and then as they're walking home, the limo went, and they're just going to walk home now. As they're walking home, she passes a store, they pass a store, and she looks in the window, she says, oh, look at that sweater, that's a beautiful sweater. He says, hang on, goes in the store, buys a sweater, and gives it to her. What's he doing? What's the point? He wants to make an impact on this girl, and in order to do it, no cost is too great. And you know what? When you fall in love with Jesus, it's the same thing. He is altogether lovely. He is altogether desirable. Does he need my money? No, he doesn't need my money. But there are people on this earth who need my money on his behalf. Because Jesus says, you know, if you love them, you love me. You know, in Matthew 25, I believe it is, Jesus said, you know, uh, people were coming to him in his kingdom. He set some on the right, his right hand and some on his left. And the sheep were on the right hand. And he said, uh, I was sick and you visited me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was in jail and you visited me. And they say, 
when did we do that? And he says, any time you did it for the least of these, my brethren, it's just as if you had done it to me. And then he goes on to say to the group on the left hand, the goats, he said, you know what? I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. I was uh, in jail and you didn't visit me. Went through basically the whole same thing he did with the other group. And then they said, just as surprised, well, what are you talking about? When was this? He says, every time you had an opportunity to help somebody in any one of those realms and you didn't do it, it's as much as if you didn't do it to me. So this whole thing is so personal with God. He, he takes everything we do into account. And um, so that's, that's that thing. Listen to this. Proverbs 19, 17. He that has pity on the poor lends to the Lord. And that which he has given, will he pay him back again? I want you to know that God keeps very, very accurate, detailed records of everything we do here on this earth. Everything. It's all written down. And when he says, if you give to the poor because your heart is as my heart, and you want to bless them and make life a little bit easier for them in any way you can. I got that written down in my book. I consider it a loan. You've loaned, you haven't given that away. You've loaned it to me. And I'm going to pay you back. Got you covered. It's coming back. That money is not gone. It's coming back. And I'll take care of the timing. But I guarantee you, I'll make good on that loan. How's that for a promise? Now, we talked uh, earlier about Luke chapter 6, verse 38, which says, the measure that you use to give is the measure that God's going to use to give back to you. And 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says essentially the same thing. He who sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly and he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And he's talking about money. He's talking about giving of our resources. And you know, if somebody gets a, a let's say a pail full of corn and it's all plantable seed, if he eats the whole thing and doesn't plant any of it, all he's gonna get is however many meals that bucket of corn provided. But if he not only uses some for his personal food, nourishment, but he takes a bunch of it and plants it in a garden, it's going to bring back 30, 60, 100 fold over and over and over again. And this is the way it is. He, he, he says, he who sows sparingly, that means you're chintzy in your giving, you're going to reap sparingly. And people look at somebody who's, they don't know this, but that somebody is generous and they're receiving and receiving and receiving. How come he's getting all that stuff all the time? I never get nothing. How much are you giving? Do you know what he's giving? You know how much you're giving. And if you'll check out your own uh, giving record, you might be surprised to realize that you're kind of a chintz. Yeah, and God doesn't bless chintzes real well. Oh, he'll give you, he'll nickel and dime you. But the, you determine, you determine how much you get back by the way in which you give. And again, it's not a calculated thing. You do it because you, your heart is to do it. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget, uh, watch it on TV3 live or go to the archives. Watch this program over and over again. Tell other people about it. We're going to finish this next week.